watch it on Free Network. West Coast, as it were, San Jose, California, and on this very difficult day in American history, one more time, uh, heartfelt feelings and, and, and thoughts and prayers go to everybody in Boston at the moment. Um, it's still only a few hours after uh, the Boston Marathon uh, bombing happened, but uh, we do have you all in our prayers and our thoughts. So uh, to all of you that, that are dealing with this uh, tragedy. Uh, be strong, and we are with, there with you. But uh, to move forward, uh, we are here with one uh, Stefan Andrews. Uh, Stefan. Yep, that's me. That's him. Right down there. Let me get your, let me get your smiling face mug up over my shoulder. Mm, so everybody, everybody sees you. There he is. Look at that. Straight off the IMDb website. You, you think you could have taken a better picture, dude? Uh, you know, I'm just going to trust that you have uh, a non-photoshopped version because I can't see you right now. <laughs> <laughs> My video link is not happening. Oh, well, you look nice. I just have to say. You have, you have a really nice nice shirt on, nice blue shirt. Yeah. Good. You just need to turn up the orange tint on your monitor. Just a little bit. Yes, because we, we all know that you're a pasty white boy like I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we must <laughs> unite. <laughs> The pasty, yeah, nice. pasty white boys of North America. Actually, no, I, I can't start chanting "White People Unite." That would be very, would be very, very, very distasteful. Very distasteful. Very bad. Onwards, onwards. <laughs> and we're here. We're here with Stefan. Stefan, as you, I don't know if anybody doesn't know who Stefan is, but Stefan uh, works with Daniel Ingram and uh, to do all of the songs. He orchestrates all of the songs that happen in not only My Little Pony, but in uh, Pound Puppies. Uh, in Voltron Force, um, and a couple of other wonderful programs that you may have not heard of yet because they haven't been announced. Uh, so, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, so, Stefan, let's let's find out some things about the man, the man behind the music, as it were. Um, let's start off with some questions. Sure. Which software packages do you use these days? Uh, I'm assuming you mean for music recording, yes, yes. sequencing, yes, all that stuff. Uh, well, you know, we kind of span the full uh, the full gamut from from start to end. Um, I personally uh, use Cubase mm -hmm. on the the Mac platform, even though it's cross platform. <clears throat> I actually used it on PC for uh, gosh a, a very long time. Uh, I used to be an old PC guy up until just a few years ago, and then. We kind of all standardized, just decided to go with, with the Mac platform. Mm -hmm. That's my uh, weapon of choice for writing music, for sequencing music, uh, whether it's writing music for underscore for the shows um, or doing orchestration for songs, uh, like you said. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> Daniel's weapon of choice is Logic Pro, which is an Apple offering. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of guys in film and TV use that uh, as well. And, uh, you know, it's kind of just different flavors of the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to get people who are going to argue uh, one or the other, you know, the Coke versus Pepsi, the PC versus Mac sort of thing. But I kind of, I try to take the middle road. Um, mm -hmm. And legitimately, I have used pretty much any DAW, um, you know, digital audio workstation that you can name in the course of my work. So I actually, I have firsthand experience 
you know, uh, <laughs> suffering the pitfalls mm -hmm. and the triumphs of each. And I kind of settled on Cubase, uh -huh. and it's been a, a very good choice for me. Um, and like I say, Logic is uh, is uh, a heavy weight. Um, the other one that is of note that I've used, we've all used, but tends not to be used as much these days for guys um, doing TV or more contemporary stuff and more of the film scoring guys mm -hmm. is a program called Digital Performer. And it's um, up until just late last year, it was a Mac only offering. Uh -huh. And now it's gone uh, cross platform. So you hear these, these programs being thrown around um, from time to time, if you ever talk with composers or read any film score blogs and things like that, um, there's I know there's a host of other programs like Sonar, uh, Fruity Loops, which is FL Studio, right. Reason, mm -hmm. uh, Reaper. Uh, there's a whole ton. I've used them all, and I'm very familiar with them, and uh, they're very capable. And I've used them from time to time for uh, template type stuff, but never directly as as the sole program that I'm using to compose music and produce music. Um, the runner up, which is kind of the elephant in the room always, is Pro Tools. Mm -hmm. And uh, the differentiation is that we all use Pro Tools, but pretty much across the board, we don't generally use it to write or produce uh, music per se. Pro Tools is used as kind of industrial type platform for assembling uh, like a television show or a film, mm -hmm. you lay everything in the picture, the dialogue, the sound effects, all the music editing, and it's just a really good thing to use as a platform to exchange files amongst different audio studios, different composers, mm -hmm. the animation studio, you name it. It's kind of worked its way as that industry standard, and a lot of guys kind of grin against it because they don't agree with the uh, the company's pricing policies, but you know, I think we'll save that for another day. Another day, another day. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's how it lays. Cool. Um, aside from uh, just guitars and keyboards, are are you guys using any other quote unquote real instruments, or is everything you're doing uh, synthesized music? Uh, no, in fact, we're doing a surprising lot of recording. Um, obviously, not just vocals, but for underscore on the shows like Littlest Pet Shop, Pound Puppies. Um, if we need something that has a lot of character, you know, because of the production cycle of television, it's very fast. We've got mm -hmm. pretty much about a week to produce all the music for one episode. Um, and, you know, we can be working on several series simultaneously. So you strive to do the very best that you can um, with the time allotted. But obviously you need to have a very tight setup and you need to have all your sounds categorized and at the ready. But there's a balance between sometimes we need um, a cue that has fiddle on it. And it's very hard to find, you know, like a Western country fiddle sample mm -hmm. in a sample library or some source online. So we have, um, we've got uh, guys working for us. We've got people on call who we, we dial up and say, hey, can you record? And they're good sight readers. Um, you know, they're very professional. And like I say, time's always of the essence. Um, right. We don't have a lot of time to sit around for hours or days trying to workshop something and mm -hmm. say, well, can you try this or that? I mean, we'd have the part sketched out. We'd have sheet music or something they can listen to and they'll play it in and away you go. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's kind of the exception for the music that we write. Um, because of time, because of the amount of product you have to produce. But, um, you know, also because sample libraries and computer-based instruments are so good these days. Mm -hmm. It, it's amazing how far you can get with them. Um, a lot of them you know, are commercial sample libraries, obviously, but they've made real leaps and bounds recently. Cool. Yeah. Um, can you describe uh, how you go about getting a choir? I mean, how much do they generally have to rehearse? I mean, you guys go into a choir. Would you have them for an entire day? Um, and how, how long does it take them to actually get what you need done? Um, yeah, the choir stuff is very cool. I mean, obviously, Daniel's had a lot more to play in with uh, the choir organization um, and getting the, the sessions underway and stuff. But when it comes to recording that, I mean, we've got all the charts, all the sheet music done up, and we usually have that sent out to performers ahead of time so they can take a look at it. Okay. You know, it gives them a chance to perform uh, 
on their own. They don't need to perform as a choir, obviously, right. and they're, they're very skilled. Mm-hmm. So we come together um, and at a you know reasonably large recording studio. It's not just to fit the people; it's also to get the acoustics in the room. You can't just get you know twenty or thirty people in a tight room. You got to get a room that lets the sound breathe. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's it's pretty critical. And so they obviously don't usually nail it on the first take. <laughs> yeah, usually. But, you know, we've got a, a few hours set aside, um, and you do enough of these sessions, you kind of get an idea of how long it takes to do it. Mm-hmm. We don't do that many. Uh, we'd love to do more, mm-hmm. and there might be more in the future, but uh, that's, not me, that's not me saying there are. Mm-hmm. I just... Uh, I love working with stuff that has choir, and you, you've heard it. You've oh, yeah, heard absolutely. all the tracks. Absolutely. Like, in, like I, I've heard this story. So maybe you can... Maybe you can uh, back this up, uh, that you guys had the choir for pieces of the, uh, the season three finale, and you got done early, and you guys, like, came up with something at the end. Was it, did that happen? Did that actually happen? Did we? You I, know? I'm asking. Uh, I don't know. Really? Where did you hear this? <laughs> I don't know <laughs> where I heard it. Are substantiating a rumor now? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm asking because the, the, uh, the really cool part was... Uh, was the choir for Princess Twilight's entrance, you know, when she was presented before the princesses, and you had oh, yes. you had you had the choir uh, uh, singing her in, which was absolutely you know chills, you know, really mm-hmm. cool. But yeah. uh, the rumor is that was a last minute thing. I don't know if I heard that rumor, unless Daniel knows something that I don't. Like I say, <laughs> he's got the scuttlebutt on that stuff. Oh, okay. Well, well, uh, but you have to you drag mean... him. You have to drag him on this show. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe you'll you'll have to bribe him. Uh, you know what? I've been trying. <laughs> it's avoiding me, is what he's doing. But there you go. Um, what instruments do you play yourself? Well, legitimately, I, I play the keyboard. I don't play a whole lot else proficiently. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> if we're gonna take it to the place where what do you play is in what have you had to play? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I've I've had to play a lot of stuff. I am barely passable at guitar, but there's a lot of stuff that I write on like Willis Pet Shop, mm-hmm. where I've had to whip out an electric guitar and play lines in because it's just. Uh, but it's not so complicated that we've had to bring in another musician who is obviously a, a decent guitar player. It's mostly this solo stuff, mm-hmm. and I'll play it in, and it just adds that extra bit of dimension that samples won't. Right. Yeah. Um, I've got lots of little stuff kicking around, like I've got a, a flute, I've got um, you know shakers, mm-hmm. um, you know like a jaw harp and harmonicas. Um, haven't really used them that much, but I'm always looking for. You got to find the right show that you can use them on. Right. You know, the shows that we've done typically have been, you know, very, uh, you know, they're kind of orchestral or the pop, or there's nothing like really zany mm-hmm. off the wall. But yeah, I've got an accordion uh, simply because it's a keyboard instrument. I can play it, but I'm okay. not. I'm not great with it. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm not great. Uh-huh. I wish I was, believe it or not. You wouldn't hear most people, you know, caught dead saying that. But I love accordion. And Stefan's uh, got a squeeze box and Daddy never sleeps at night. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, Daniel's got an accordion <laughs> as well. <laughs> uh, are you in any bands at all? Uh, you play keys for, like, a local band or something you have fun doing? You ever play? No. One? No? No, years ago I was in a jazz band. I played uh, keyboards a bit, but it wasn't anything big. Ah. Uh, truth be told, I'm not a great live player. Um I'm very much used to either just improvising on my own or sitting at you know a screen mm-hmm. sequencing stuff. And uh, I mean, I'm I can perform, but I'm very bad with performing with others simultaneously. Oh, okay, uh, that's that's a, an admonition. <laughs> <laughs> um, who are some of your composer heroes? People you look up to, composers? Oh, well, there's a lot, um, and I'm not going to say that I can't name any or or, or just one, but. Mm-hmm. Um, I look up to a lot of film score composers. Um, I have a great appreciation for the classics, but uh, I never really grew up on a lot of the classics. Um, never took very uh, lengthy, you know, music lessons, piano lessons. I dropped out at grade three, so I was never, you know, pounded to play the Beethoven and the Mozart and all yeah. that stuff. Um, I I love that stuff, but what I really, when I listen to stuff that I want inspiration from or that I really enjoy listening to, it's got to be guys like, um, you know, contemporary and and composers from the last century from Hollywood, like mm-hmm. uh, John Williams, 
Uh, Danny Elfman is a, a huge inspiration, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I absolutely love everything that he does, and I kind of really grew up on on listening to his stuff. Um, and of course, on Zimmer, James Newton Howard, um, Warner. As much as I love to hate the guy, I hate to love him. <laughs> <laughs> um, and more recently, guys like John Powell. Um, and I know that you know I can cite off names. A lot of these guys, uh, except John Williams, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who is sacrosanct. <laughs> um, a lot of these guys have teams um, that orchestrate or they do a bit of ghostwriting or whatever, but it's more about the product they produce mm -hmm. and the music is really good. Like, I never venerate people, really. I look at the, produ the, the stuff they produce and I really, I really dig that stuff. Cool. Um, yeah. Looking at uh, some of the stuff on your IMDb, uh, you're credited as, a comp as the composer on Magical Mystic Cure and an arranger on a lot of the other episodes. How did, uh, what's the difference really? Um, well, I mean, first of all, IMDb can be a very, it's kind of like Wikipedia. Right. Anybody can go in there and update stuff. And sometimes you get the production crew. Sometimes it's fans. Sometimes it's you. Sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. And there's no indication, unlike Wikipedia, of, of where the information has Came come from. from. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of a weird, closed, secret society. And I don't really get it. But most of it's pretty accurate. There's a lot of stuff in there. Mm -hmm. um, for the season three finale, uh, that is correct because I wrote most of the background music for that, and and Daniel also wrote uh, some of the background music for that, uh, as well as continuing um, our roles as Daniel, a uh, songwriter, and I was mm -hmm. orchestrating six of the seven songs that was in the app. So I mean, that's quite wow. a. It's quite a crowning achievement for us we're very proud of it yeah and uh i think we've submitted it to a number of uh you know awards we're gonna see how that plays out see if it wins anything for music awesome yeah it's great it should. um as for the other episodes on my little pony um the way it comes up is that um a ranger and orchestrator are kind of they're actually very specific terms but in the general sense you know a lot of the lay man will kind of interchange them a bit. Mm -hmm. um, I've been orchestrator for most of the songs um, over the course of the entire series for My Little Pony, um, but have not written the background music. Uh, people who are uh, well aware that Will Anderson, mm -hmm. uh, who mm -hmm. is an uh, amazing composer, a uh, great guy, I've met him several times, and he has been the driving force behind writing most of the background music for season one, season two, season three. Uh -huh. um, the difference between this finale of season three was that there was so much music and it was kind of basically a musical Right. that we sat down and we said, okay, it would probably make more sense for us to take over the whole episode. And that way the underscore dovetails and works with um, the songs. But you'll notice that a lot of the underscore cues, the background music, actually use themes or derivations of themes from the songs mm -hmm. in that episode. Didn't I'm sure that. there's there's some that noticed that. That was very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool. Um, now, taking the songs that you guys have done, your songs are getting remixed into just about every musical genre you can shake a stick at, right? Um, except maybe country. Uh, what remix genre? would you like to see more of? I don't know, Dusty. Have you ever looked for country covers? Well, there's got to be one. Uh, there's got to be one somewhere. One out there. There's got to be one somewhere out there. Somewhere. You know, <laughs> was, you know, I did a country song, but that was like a, a, a mock of a, an actual country song, not one of your songs. But uh, yeah, I haven't actually oh, found any. You're just mocking it now, I see. Yeah, yeah, I mock, I, I mock can, the country song. Can we do anything other than mock the country genre? I like the country genre. I do. I grew up I'm in Michigan. Kidding. God. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just poking fun at you, Dustin. I know. Yeah. Well, because there's so much out there, it's mm -hmm. hard to say if there's one genre I'd like to see something in because it probably exists somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just guessing. I, I haven't seen most of it. Oh, <laughs> That's a good time. Um, um, yeah, you, I'd yeah. love to see some some kind of like you know epic film trailer style or, or, or film score style stuff. I know there's lots of orchestral stuff out mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. but like, take one of the pop songs and turn it into, you know, something that you might hear in a movie or in a movie trailer. Oh, there you go. Hey, Pony Phonic, get on it. <laughs> Don't that, you heard that guy, right? Pony Phonic? 
Oh, gee. I'm, I'm, I, I don't know. I'll send you. I'll send you the links. You're gonna love him. Um, are you are are you tired of dubstep yet? Am I tired of it? Yeah. I can't say I'm tired of it because I just haven't heard that much. <gasps> um, I've heard enough. I don't okay. know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard enough to know I've that I never want to hear it again. No. There's some good stuff. Uh, no, well, you kind of you you say that like it's a it's a bit of a craze that's come and it is it's, it's popular. There's a lot of there's a lot of dubstep music out there uh, based off of My Little Pony. Lots of it. Um, oh, okay. Just uh, because yeah, you're so busy, off... I'm sure you don't get to hear a lot of it. Yeah, there's a lot, and you know what? I love it. Um, and to be perfectly honest, mm -hmm. there's a lot of extraordinary stuff out there. Mm -hmm. Like of what I've heard, um, it's nothing, nothing to sneeze at. No, it's not. It's very well produced. Yeah. Uh, some of the songs, like uh, "Morning in Ponyville," uh, seem to have embedded flourishes and frills timed to the animation. Um, these were are these were you added? Do you add these after the animation was done, or did you do it before the animation? Um, nope. The animation is always done after the song's produced. Okay. So anything that happens in there is usually. It's not usually a product of the writers um, because a lot can change from conception to writing a song and, and getting it locked to time and, mm -hmm. and very specifics. I mean, a lot of the times it's the storyboarders and the animators. Um, I'm pretty sure. Don't get me wrong here because I'm not certain. But I do know for a very, um, a very certain fact that they put a lot of those kind of gags in and those flourishes um, based off of the roughs that are done, you know, mm -hmm. of the, the storyboard. So, no, it's very rare, if ever, in fact, almost never, that it comes back to me and Daniel and they mm -hmm. say, hey, we want to have a flourish here or do something here. Mostly, it's very broad strokes notes about the style of the song mm -hmm. or the lyrics in particular. Oh. And that, that's usually handled before or during the production of the song. Oh, so, so you've had some songs that were locked to print and then had to go back and fix after somebody said, no, it looked work better this way? Uh, sometimes, but it's usually very minor. It's like changing some some words of the the lyrics or changing an instrumentation choice. But it's usually, uh, and this is why it's so great to work on these songs. Usually, there's very few notes that are given on mm -hmm. changes of the production. You know, uh, the work that we do is very well received generally. Oh, cool, awesome. Yeah. Um, which which of the pony songs that you guys have worked on sticks in your head? the most i mean the one you find yourself humming along to and you thought i'm humming this song why am i humming this song <laughs> um there's a lot of them you mean just randomly humming? yeah yeah what's that what's that pony song that sticks with you i mean you're the guy who wrote them it's like there have you like one out there that really sticks and sticks with you <laughs> well it's funny a lot of the earlier ones like the season one songs mm -hmm. i'm pretty proud of and i end up singing them because when i'm working on them i would sing along with them mm -hmm. Just uh, you know, just because it seems natural to do it, that doesn't happen on every song. Okay. Uh, but which one was it? Now you you've avoided the question. Oh, which one was it? Hmm. Um, well, it's hard for me to say whether there's like a favorite of mine or uh -huh. one that really kind of catches me. Uh -huh. um, I really kind of like this day aria, and I like Celestia's song mm -hmm. from the finale. Right. Um, I just think it's kind of a bit of a departure from a lot of the very upbeat and very kind of pop driven or even just, you know, boisterous stuff mm -hmm. that's typical. It's just so, it has a lot of feels. Yes, it has a lot of feels. <laughs> a lot. We love the feels around here, by the way. Um, speaking of complex, uh, songs, particularly in the season closers, are very complex. Uh, in particular, what my cutie mark is telling me. Um, one of those songs with unusual chord sequences and changes a uh, different style for each of the main six has to be worked into the song how much harder is it to make those songs than it is in the other ones uh well yeah they're they're definitely a handful <laughs> i mean it's i guess you could say it's less straightforward than for example celestia's song mm -hmm. where it's kind of consistent from front to back and it's more taking you know we want this emotional orchestral type thing to build into um you know the transformation um is it more work? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Is, is it? Uh, uh, well, it's obviously more work. But is it? Is it more? Is how much? How much more complex is it for you? Uh, is, is it more fun to do that kind of song, or is it? Uh, are you looking more towards Celestia's song? Is it? Is it more of a challenge? Is the challenge more fun than just doing a simple song? 
Uh, well, the challenge is there. It all depends on whether I feel like I'm up to the challenge that particular day. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I thoroughly enjoy working on all the different styles. Like I honestly, I can't say that it's more work, um, but it does take more time, mm -hmm. but I enjoy it. So it's not like it's more work. Okay. It's just, it's going through more changes. That's all. Oh, all right. Yeah. It's not like, you know, I'm, I'm struggling and I can't sleep at night and I'm smoking in the back of the alley every five minutes. <laughs> really um do you know of any good internet resources for people interested in learning to work in orchestral music you know someplace that they can learn to do these kind of things um do you mean learn to just as write and and arrange for orchestra yeah, yeah, or, or to yeah. do it professionally no just to learn how to do it how, how to write that kind of thing um you know there's not much that pops into my head offhand mm -hmm. it's it's a pretty big thing to to bite off and chew um and, uh, you know, I might be remiss saying this, but there's kind of different ways. Uh, everybody does it a little differently. Mm -hmm. You can go to school to learn that kind of stuff, usually in a professional capacity. Oh. And then they teach you a lot of music history and they teach you, you know, procedure. Mm -hmm. uh, because they have to teach you something. They can't just stand up in there and say, you know, this is how you do it. I don't know how it happens. Just, you know, yeah. either you can or you can't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um Online, I don't know of any offhand. There's probably a lot. I'd say that the ones that are free, I'd probably be a bit dubious about. Right. There is one that kind of pops into my head. There was some sort of open um, learning program, uh, I think from one of the universities or from some consortium that mm -hmm. actually had quite a lengthy, um, you know, like from point A to point B, they worked through all the tenets of orchestration and writing for the instruments and making them work together. Wow. Um, I I never really went through any of that stuff, so mm -hmm. unfortunately, I'm probably the wrong kind of guy to ask about that <laughs> stuff. I'm I'm seriously the guy who just listened to a bunch of film music and then decided to do it as a job one day. Oh, he's sort of like the kid who who sequestered himself in his bedroom with a drum set and a record player. And yeah. Just, you know, this is how you play drums. And sooner or later, you could play drums. Okay, but for a real music instrument. <laughs> oh, 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 snap. Yeah, I went there. Sorry. You hit, um, two words, Neil. Inst two words, Neil Pert. Shut Instantly up. Instantly all of our viewers have left. Shut up. <laughs> um, give, us, give us your best brony convention story. Strange moment, best moments, wish you were back moments. Give us, give us a good one. Uh, Las Pegasus Unicorn, done. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing front to back <laughs> well no mostly the back oh mostly the back mostly get, leaving mostly yes. leaving yes <laughs> <laughs> well you know i've only been to two conventions actually yeah you went to everfree northwest last year where, yep. we, where we met uh, which was awesome by the way tragically tragically awesome tragically awesome <laughs> uh, yes that was great and then las pegasus but give us give us like that that one Las Pegasus story. Give us give us like one story. Do it. Uh, hmm. Come on, it was memorable. You had to remember one. Well, I mean, the highlights for me were meeting John Delancey. I had never oh, met him before. Yeah. Uh, and believe it or not, Tara Strong. I had not actually met her face to face. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah. Did she say anything uh, life changing to you? Uh, let's go party. Nice. <laughs> Awesome. To which I subsequently refused and went to your party. Oh, that, that's my boy right there. <laughs> that's my boy. Come to my party. Awesome. Yeah, well, actually, I mean, a kind of a funny story is um, Daniel and, uh, you know, our crew, mm -hmm. and I think some other folks, some mm -hmm. of the voice actors, were going to go out to hit one of the really big Vegas clubs on the Strip, I right. think, Saturday night. Mm -hmm. And I was just at the precipice of going because, right. you know, I've never been to something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I ran into M.A. Larson. Right. And... You know, he seemed to take a shining to me. The poor dear. <laughs> he looked lost. He was like deer in the headlights. And I'm like, 
okay, I will hold your hand through this. Mm -hmm. I won't go. And so I stuck around and, uh, you know, we had beers and we talked uh, just at the, the convention site. And I'm like, well, I'd rather get to know some of the show staff, right. um, like M.A., who I'd not uh, met as well, mm -hmm. um, than just go out and, you know, get snookered on, on booze and right. nice ladies. Mm -hmm. and Yeah. <laughs> well, it was awesome because by the time Emmy Larson came to, up to our room party, he had like an entourage of about like 20 guys following him up to the room. And it was a private party. So it was like, you know, it's like you, you, and you can come. The rest of you guys, I don't know who you are. You need to go. So, <laughs> I, I don't know you. And then it's evolved. You. And then it all devolved into a game of cards against humanity with me and, and Mike the microphone. Nice. That went swimmingly i bet it should have been a should have been a video camera on that one yeah one wow. and done mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't know if i'll be doing that again <laughs> oh um i don't know there's comment too many weird stories and things that happened yeah. at that convention but it was still fun um, oh yeah absolutely and you can't help but have a blast and i'd love to go to more but as as of yet i don't really have Anything booked. Nobody's really... <gasps> no booking. Nobody's asked me. Nothing's shaken, so... Oh, you gotta get him, guys. Gets... This guy is like... This guy is a lightning wit on Twitter. He is the pun... He's the pun master. And you could probably actually write an episode. You know? I bet you could. Probably, but, you know, we've got monkeys for that. <laughs> oh! 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 <laughs> oh! M.A. It's all right. I already oh. made that joke on Twitter. They saw it, so they, I'm not okay. speaking at all. Okay. I don't know. M.A. M.A. is like got this, you know, Grizzly Adams beard. He might get mad. You know, I don't know. <laughs> 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 okay, so we're going to go to commercial. And then when we come back, we're going to go over, uh, we're going to go over the charities as they go on the Manliest Brownie website. So we're going to go over the charities that have been going on for the last couple of weeks. We're going to find out whose charity Stefan is backing and then we'll be right back with your questions for the man with screwball so don't go nowhere we'll be right back every year 10,000 baby manicores never live to see their first birthday those who do will be hunted for their fur, or worse yet, for their stingers, the venom used in voodoo rituals in the farthest reaches of Equestria. You and I can help, along with the MF. For only five bits a month, you can sponsor a baby manicure. You'll receive a booklet telling you the name of your little bundle of fur, and picture updates every month. Oh, how cute. Your bits will put life-giving medicine into a helpless little body. Nourishing food into a little stomach. Please, help us here at the Equestrian Manicore Fund. And make sure that all of Celestia's creatures are treated with kindness and respect. Can you think of a better reason not to call EMF right now and give these wondrous creatures a chance at life? Call now! And we're back! Amazingly enough, Fluttershy would love to have you give your bits to the Equestrian Manticore Fund. A few bits a day will keep those manticores from being sadly reaped for their stingers. Dismembered? But, dismembered, yes. But we're back, we're back. And with screwy screwballs around, aren't you screwy? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. So we're gonna, maybe. We're, maybe. We're gonna go over. We're gonna go over the charities as they are sitting right now. Uh, so two weeks ago, we had Andrew Francis on the program. Andrew wanted you to kick in some money for Kiki, uh, Kiki's fund, and we did awesome. Six hundred and eighty dollars for mm. the Kiki fund. Uh, so the, we're going to go ahead and raffle off the Rainbow Dash Build-A-Bear. This one's mine, but yours is over there in in her box. Right here. Yay, she's going to go home to you. And all the names are in this hat. I'm going to shake them up like that. 
Close our eyes and pick a name for that. Here we go. K Feathers. K Feathers. You win Rainbow Dash. Woo! Yay, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you win Rainbow Dash. Not only that, but you're going to get an autographed picture from Andrew Francis when I get them. And the drawing that Pixel Kitty came up with is now over my shoulder um, of Shining Armor catching a wave. So, she finished that up only yesterday, and I don't think Andrew's even seen it yet. So, you're going to get one of those and one of those. So, there are three other prizes for this that Andrew put up, which is him actually doing your return message for your phone. So I'm going to pick three more names, and you're going to get that. So, OB2, OB2, you get one, and you're going to get that and the, the autograph. And my girlfriend, Amy, is going to get that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Eclipse. Eclipse, you're going to get that too. So you three are going to get the the answering machine message from Andrew and an autographed picture. So you three are going to you are also winners. So we like to remind you that yes. this wasn't rigged. <laughs> this was not rigged. This was not rigged. Okay, so let's get her. We're done with that. Oh, okay. Put the hat on. There we go. Uh, the ongoing charity for our last week's guest, GM Barrow, writer of the Pony novels was the Joyful Heart Foundation. Now uh, we're at about 160 bucks for them at the moment, uh, and the prizes on that are going to be the, this wonderful bag with her book and a flitter shy. Oh, no, actually, it's a derpy, derpy keychain, and a few buttons. So that is ongoing at the moment at manlysparty.com. But Stephen Andrews, Stephen Andrews, with today's. Uh, what was going on is picking the Red Cross of Boston, correct? Yes. Yes, the Red Cross of Boston needs our help now more than ever. So um, with everything that's going on, uh, it doesn't matter your political affiliation. It doesn't matter what's going on. Uh, you don't need that latte. Uh, the Red Cross needs help with blood donations. They need help for money to, to, to get things done, to set up relief, to help people that need the help today. Um, everyone wants to help, but it all does cost money. Um, so you go to manlessbrony.com after the show and give five bucks, give your weekly latte money to redcross.com. And for that, for that, we have this Fluttershy Interplay Collector Box, which has the very first foil from Series 2 in it. And I got one of these for me, so I got the foil card, and it's got, uh, it's actually got, uh, it's got the first series cards in it along with the second series foil, which is kind of weird. But it's a cute little box. And I'm also going to kick in, myself, this signed script page by Cindy Morrow. And this is a script page from Daring Do episode. So this is going to be kicked into that. So on top of that, Stefan Andrews, what are you going to kick in? I'm going to kick in something pretty sweet. Um yes. So we've discussed, uh, you know, typically what uh, people would like to give, you know, people that are guests on the show. Yeah. And because I'm not some big flashy voice actor, I don't have a photo that I can really, <laughs> nobody wants my photo. Yeah. So I think that something that would be interesting to people would be to get um, a sheet of sheet music. Yes. That is taken from one of the songs from the show. Yes. But you get to pick which song. <gasps> And I can Ooh. sign it. That is tasty right there. It's pretty sweet. That um, is pretty sweet. That is pretty sweet. And, and there's tons of songs. I mean, you can pick any song from, from all three seasons and have this man sign it for you. So that is liquid awesome right there. That's 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 better than I was going to come up with. Wow, that is awesome. So after and this, yes, and as uh, one more thing. <gasps> <laughs> wow, it's getting better. As as a bonus, I will also get Daniel Ingram's signature. On it. <gasps> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Mine's that, worth more. You hear that, people? But... Yes, your your signature is worth more. But Daniel Ingram and Stephen Andrews signing a piece of sheet music from the show, which does not exist and has never existed. In... No, they, it's it's like the scripts. Yes, um, you it's know, like the, the sheet scripts. music is not published. No. Um, 
but you know it's okay if 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 we can yeah. give away a, a one piece sheet. from it one piece uh, because you know it's simply reflecting the music yeah. that has already, already been published there. absolutely so that is liquid awesome you're a gentleman and a scholar absolutely my pleasure yes so but and a rolling total for everything that we've done so far since we started these challenges um, we have gotten, we have raised over $4,800, $4,862 so far. And with the money we already have in Joyful Heart Foundation, we have broke $5,000 for charities wow. so far. And we're doing nice. very, we're doing very well, people. Keep it up. Um, so we are now to Screwball and your questions. We got a bunch. Yeah. <laughs> we got a bunch? We yeah. Got a bunch? Ooh, yeah. And we're just going to go for a comment first because this one's actually pretty awesome for you, Stefan, uh, from Imperius. Uh, he just likes to say, music can reach out and touch people in so many ways, in so many ways, even reach their souls. I just want to, I, I, I just want you to know that I've heard your music from Pound Puppies, LPS, FIM, and it sometimes reminds me that I'm human during these hard times. And he just likes to say thank you. Oh, thank you so much. That's that's so nice to hear from people. You yeah, know, we don't it's... get a lot of feedback, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, My Little Pony. There's there's lots of uh, there's lots of feedback from fans, but you know, that's the first show I've worked on where that's almost ever happened. Mm -hmm. It's uh, quite a phenomenon. Mm -hmm. A phenomenon. Yeah, so thank you. Yes. <laughs> Uh, oh, here's one. Uh, so this one's from Flare Runner. Uh, to Stefan, do you listen to any brony musicians? And if so, who do you like and why? Um, I've only heard, uh, you know, videos and songs and things from time to time. Um, I don't really have the capacity to listen to stuff on a regular basis. Um, so... I mean, I've met a few Brony musicians, actually. Um, obviously, Mando Pony, I have met, and I really dig his stuff. Um, you know, he's even kind of worked with us mm -hmm. from time to time. Um, and I'm aware of, you know, a number of other musicians in the community, but I haven't actually been able to listen to a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so this one is from, I always say your name wrong, <laughs> Shakara Speeder. Uh, he actually makes these awesome posters, and he was wondering, Stefan, if you would like one art set one, or a poster, yes or no. He makes these pretty awesome ones. He always emails them to you on Twitter or whatever. Uh, he, he says something about a opera duck poster. I don't know what the <laughs> story behind that is. But... Oh, we love opera duck. Yes, we do. Yeah, I can't see anything right now because I don't have a video feed, but I would definitely like it. Do it. Yeah, he'll, he'll yeah. definitely make it for you and get you on Twitter, so yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you. Me I am so disorganized today, dear Lord. <laughs> uh, get with it. I get with it. Um, uh, <laughs> ooh, here we go. So this one's from uh, Bane. Uh, question for Andrews. Uh, which music programs would you recommend for a beginner slash hobby musician? Oh. Yeah, um, I think I can answer this one. <laughs> um, if you're on the Mac platform, uh, believe it or not, GarageBand is not a bad place to start. It's really dirt cheap, and it's got some pretty uh, some pretty powerful stuff. Um, if you want something that gives you a little more depth, a little more uh, versatility, you should really take a look at Reaper. Now, there's a music program called Reaper, and uh, it's really cheap. In fact, I think it's free for personal use, but I, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But it's very, very cheap. And you can do a amazing amount of stuff in that. It's almost as powerful as, you know, like Pro Tools, Cubase, Logic, the, the, the heavyweights. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, for a beginner, it's tough because there's going to be quite a learning curve on there. But the product itself, the software, is great because... You know, it's very inexpensive, and what it can do is pretty is pretty amazing. And you can add to it. You know, you can add software instruments. Mm -hmm. You can add stuff just like you can the the big boy um, software that's out there that costs hundreds of dollars. Hundreds of dollars. Yeah. Hmm. I've tried GarageBand before. I suck at it. <laughs> <laughs> now there's uh... there is a I mean, it kind of comes down to what kind of music you want to make too there's software that kind of leans itself to some genres or some production styles um, I mean FL Studio Fruity Loops is not a bad um, 
piece of software to get into. I can't remember how much it costs, but it's pretty easy to learn, and there's a whole ton of tutorials and stuff you can find on YouTube. Um, I mean, I'm not trying to endorse any particular uh, software maker, but um, you can get some amazing um, sound out of that. And I know a lot of guys that are working um, producing like some pretty big time stuff that are using that software. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm bringing this one early because I like this question. <clears throat> so this one is from James, James Justice! <laughs> oh, I always have to prepare myself for that one. <laughs> I'm, uh... Sorry, sorry this, this, this is from Distortion? What? No, James Justice is our resident superhero. Oh, okay. That didn't That's come through. That didn't come through on the square wave that I heard. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually his name. That was James. His name is Justice. James Justice. Yes. <laughs> okay. And it's awesome. Yeah. But uh, his, his question they asked for you, Stefan, is: Is there a favorite mood you like to work with in music, such as happy songs to suspenseful, suspenseful songs, and that sort of thing? A favorite mood? Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, and it's kind of along the veins of, you know, film music and stuff that really is designed to evoke emo emotion. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really like stuff that's kind of deep and introspective um, and really has complexity to it. It doesn't have to be busy um, or big, but, you know, I just love stuff that evokes emotion and kind of makes you think. Mm -hmm. Um, not, I, I don't know why, but that's the truth. <laughs> that, that's the answer. I don't, uh, listen to a lot of really upbeat, um, type stuff, whether it's pop or not. Uh, I don't either. I'm more of orchestra. I listen to either sad or... Oh, I know. Actually... We've, we've established this on Twitter. <laughs> I know. We've a lot see, of that. See, <laughs> Screwy, Screwy's a brother in arms because yes. he likes Two Steps from Hell and Audio Machine and Hans Zimmer and all that big, sweet film type stuff. <laughs> I'm so, I was so shocked when I found out you're such a fan too. I'm like, oh my god. Yes. He's best pony. <laughs> yes. There now exist two of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, so I gotta ask you, Stefan, is uh, do you have an OC? Original character pony. Do I have one? I actually have a whole bunch, but it's kind of awkward because I don't know if I have like an official one. Uh huh. Um, there was a whole bunch of really generous folk who drew these up like a long time ago when I first got on Facebook and Twitter. Um, and then I think there's one that's kind of stuck. Um, it's one that kind of has a piano in the background, and uh, it's like a sort of a tan-colored uh, pony. Mm -hmm. um, I've actually been... It's weird, because I've been kind of thinking about um, figuring out, like, actually getting to the bottom <laughs> of what it should look like. Um, not that I'm, you know, tough to please. I'm just really indecisive. And, you know, I've had a number of people tell me, including Sibzy, mm -hmm. that I'm not the type of person that would have an OC. I don't know what that means. But huh. weird. Uh, everybody has one, right? Yeah, Shouldn't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get I'm on it, artists. <laughs> I've had Spike. Um, yeah. I had uh, a very talented um, artist do that up, just because that was kind of a funny idea that I had, and <coughs> mm -hmm. I've been using that for um, a little while. Um, I mean, hey, if I'm not a pony, maybe I'm a dragon, right? Yep. yep. Maybe. Yep. Maybe. I found validity after all. <laughs> <laughs> If anyone want to ask is that uh, one, one of our friends, uh, Firemane, he makes these amazing carvings, and he was wondering if you had an OC or anything like that, that he could actually make you a carving of that OC. And if if there's a certain picture of, of uh, a certain yeah. OC that you enjoy, just send it on over to his Twitter, and he could get it done for you, because this man makes some freaking amazing freaking carvings. Amazing. Like They're like plaques. Yep. Sort of yeah, yeah. That's very cool. I've actually seen a few of them. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I ran into him at Everfree last year. Yeah. And, and yeah, uh, definitely. But, yeah. <laughs> it's funny because I actually <laughs> I asked Pixel Kitties, I think a couple of weeks ago, if she'd be interested in like drafting up an idea for me or designing mm -hmm. something. Um, just because I know she's been doing that for a, a whole bunch of folks who are associated mm -hmm. with the show. I mean, she's amazingly talented. Uh, but. <laughs> I think she's been busy with other things, so I haven't really pursued it. Mm -hmm. 
But mm-hmm. yeah, we'll 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 see. Contact her, get it, and we'll, we'll see. We'll then see. talk to fire. <laughs> we'll see. She's been busy drawing charity images for Andrew Francis and other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah which is really nice, though. There you go. Uh, so this one is from Douglas. Uh, question for you, Andrew, is what song was the hardest to make out of anything you've ever done? Oh, the hardest. Oh, back, we're back to the hard question. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the hardest. You mean the, the one that put me through the most blood, sweat, and tears? There you go. Uh, because <laughs> I go through all three on every single song. Yes. <laughs> some more blood, some less. Uh, <laughs> Usually Daniel's blood. Oh, geez. Let's see. The one that was the most, um, I mean, in terms of the most intensive when it comes down to really, like, time intensive and really trying to work out, like, what's supposed to happen with stuff. Um, I mean, that, you know, like I say, the season one songs, like, at the gala and stuff are pretty big and pretty involved. But mm-hmm. that season three finale we took the cake, I think. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, it was not just seven songs when I mean, they all kind of had to work together and it had to make sense in, in the story and all the rest. Usually songs are just, they're just kind of like one song in a show and uh, you know, it's okay. Here's the slug in the show for the song and we've inserted it in the storyboard and there it is. And it's, you know, there's not much else uh, being considered. That and that happened over the period of a long time. Like we produced those songs over the period of many months, well mm-hmm. in advance. It didn't all happen all at once. So oh. it was this kind of weird metamorphosis when all of a sudden they all came together as the show was being assembled and we were writing the, the final underscore. The underscore is always done like at the very end. Mm-hmm. Songs are always done well ahead of time. So yeah, um, my answer is seven songs. <laughs> 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 So this one is from Ajax. A uh, question to, to you, Stefan, is what has been your favorite show to work on? My favorite show, huh? Um, hmm. It's a bit of a, a stumper. I mean, uh, <laughs> I'd like to say My Little Pony, but obviously in terms of actual input, like how much I've worked on a show, um, I've kind of worked on My Little Pony the least of a lot of the shows I've worked on, simply because... You know, we don't do all of the background music as well. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, the songs are a monumental feat. Um, I was just talking today at lunch with someone uh, thinking about this, where, you know, the the amount of time and resources that have to go into doing a song are totally not proportional to the music that goes in the background of the show. There's a lot more of it, but uh, it takes like almost the same amount of time to write and workshop and revise and produce and record and mix and master a song than it does to kind of lay down the music track for uh, an episode. Mm-hmm. Not to, you know, um, make it any lighter of a, of a gig than, than the songs, obviously. Um, yeah. Sorry, what was the question? I just <laughs> I got distracted. <laughs> I got distracted. Oh. I'm lost. <laughs> I just got rid of it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> so literally, uh, my head just left me right there. My head left me, too. God. Um, I we're headless around here. Kids. We're all headless. <laughs> we're, right, we're running around like chickens with our heads. What is this? We're the headless horsemen. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> uh, that was um, a grim joke. That was grim. The three My Little Ponies of the Apocalypse? <laughs> Four. Four. Death. <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, my apologies. I I forgot where I was going with it. I'm, I'm trying to rewind my brain, but I can't seem to. Um. Oh, oh, your favorite show to work on? Yeah. Oh, favorite yes. show to work on? Yeah. Right. <laughs> because I'm just really avoiding this question. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to say something that's not pleasing to the pleasing. Audience. Um. I kind of have to throw a curveball here and say that my favorite show to work on was uh, League of Super Evil. Ooh. And I don't know if anybody's seen the show, but a number of the voice actors, um, like Lee Tokar and those guys, they worked on it. And he does a hilarious voice in the show. Um, but the music that I was able to do for that show, they gave me a lot of license to do kind of whatever I wanted. But it was all this kind of really 
big bombastic ridiculous stuff like a lot of my idols like mm -hmm. Danny Elfman and those guys where you know it's this bumbling band of miscreant uh, superhero or super villains mm -hmm. but they're not, they're trying to be bad but they're not bad mm -hmm. and this is obviously not the first time this this formula has been enacted in television but the music that I was able to write was this really big kind of dramatic choir and bombast and what was happening was utter failure but in juxtaposition it was hilarious it was very funny cool it's a good show i i really enjoy it I always seen on ytv and next to that one mlp and kid versus cat those ones were the ones i like to watch the most <laughs> and i got to do music on that show where i was singing like little la la kids really what you la, did la, that la, la. Oh, yeah, I wrote music like that. So, <laughs> funnily enough, there's this, you know, like, other dimensional world that's full of rainbows and, and unicorns. Oh, no. <laughs> In the show, and for that part <laughs> of the show, I wrote this stupid, like, music box, chalice type thing with, like, you know, this, <laughs> this totally deranged <laughs> me singing on the backing track. It was crazy. <laughs> Uh, you couldn't get away with that on, you know, like other shows like My Little Pony, <laughs> but it was so much fun. I, I remember the episode too. I think that's that's the Hellhound's alternate dimension or sign where he goes. Yeah, and it comes what... back later. And yeah. Yeah, I, I, I forgot about that. No, no, I, I do not want to think about that song ever again because that was creepy. Oh, <laughs> Kid Santa Claus, hit him with a stick. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it was a nightmare, you're right. Nice. Next. Uh, so there's this question. This question. Uh, so this one's from WolfX1120. Question for you, Stefan, is Luna or Celestia? New Lunar Republic or, or uh, Solar Empire? <laughs> I got this question again. I've had this question before. Mm -hmm. Why is this important? Can someone please fill me in? I asked this on Twitter like a, a day or two ago. This, this is important because it's important. Pick a side. Because it's important. Well, I already staked my claim. I said Celestia because <sighs> she's reliable and methodical mm -hmm. and Luna's a loose cannon. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Strike one. And no, I'm not going with Cadence either. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next. Oh, we're just, just gonna ignore that now. <laughs> uh, but, Do uh, I like bananas? Way. <laughs> Do you? Okay, that's that, that. Okay, that's a good. Dole, point Dole or Tropicana? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so what, Celestia. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so this one. Uh, one second. Oh, here it is. Uh, so this one's from Buttons Pony for Buttons. Stefan. Uh, I love Buttons. He's an awesome guy. Yep. Uh, mm. uh, Oh, here we go. So, for Stefan, has Hasbro ever talked about releasing the music as a soundtrack? Um, I think so. I mean, this is something that kind of comes and goes often. And, you know, all of us really want to see a soundtrack. Yes, we do. Um, obviously, if, if anyone knew whether that was going to happen, they couldn't really say much. But, you know, to be honest, I haven't seen much happening. I know that sounds kind of discouraging. Mm -hmm. um, but... You know, and I'm not the one that's also in, in the line of fire for those discussions anyways. Yeah. Um, you know, that's usually between Daniel and, and uh, Hasbro. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I would love to see it, though. I would yes. totally get it. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm just reading through these. Uh, oh, right. Right, care to win. What? He says, right answer, eat it, Lunar Rebels. Whoa! This is gonna turn a war. <laughs> yeah, in my own house. Jeez. Um. So this one. Oh, here it is. Uh. So this one's from Bot One One Seven. Question for all. Do you? What do you like to do on your spare time? You're looking at it. This is my spare time. <laughs> <laughs> Radio shows, right? Radio shows. Entertain people. Ride motorcycles. Uh. Might I point out the fallacy in your question is that the basular assumption that there is free time. Yeah, basular, yeah, that there's free time at all. <laughs> yeah, I don't get a lot of free time personally. Um, 
that's kind of changing. You know, stuff comes and goes with uh, production work because it's not like working a, a salary nine to five kind of job where you step in and you step out. Like mm-hmm. if there's work to be done, it's got to be done. And if there's a lot of it, well, tough luck. Tough luck. <clears throat> so we've kind of come out of a period of a few months here where it's been very, very active, very productive. And you try not to lose steam mm-hmm. while that's happening. Um, but, you know, I'm getting more free time now. Um, I'm actually I'm very happy that you invited me on the show, Dusty. Man, I yeah. love doing stuff like this on my free time. Awesome. Um, obviously, I love being on Twitter in my free time because mm-hmm. even if I'm the only person who thinks that I am funny, it's it's <laughs> enjoyable for we me. We all think you're funny. Yeah, I think you're funny. <laughs> we all think you're I funny. I your puns. I just love your puns. They're so hilarious. Yes. Good. There's two of us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of people have been posting to me saying it's like oh i can't wait to see stefan on here because he's gonna be he's he's the pun master and it's like everyone knows you yes. for your puns <laughs> yeah which begs the question like well if i'm gonna have a cutie mark is it gonna be music related or is it gonna be <laughs> pun i don't related. know what pun related <laughs> <laughs> i don't know how that work anyway what's the pun cutie mark look like <laughs> i don't know that's the challenge isn't that's it? the challenge isn't it? that's the challenge puns are so, funny mayor yes. It's time, it's time to put creativity to work on the fandom, see if they can Do actually it. pick up something. <laughs> <laughs> I have faith. <laughs> uh, my free time? I like to go on Twitter, too, a lot. Um, and game. I, know. I like to game it out. I love Twitter. I love gaming. There you go. Oh, and I love listening to music before I go to bed. It's my top things to do. <laughs> cool. Next. That's it. Um, uh, so this one's from Chris Sargent. Chris. Uh, to you, Stefan, is what is your dream car? Dream car? Oh, yeah. man. Um, that's actually a good question because I don't drive. <gasps> <gasps> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Fairly easy in Vancouver. Good, good so public every, transportation in Vancouver. So every car is a dream car for me, really. There you go. There you go. Everyone. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's a, you know, I actually don't really dig the the fast, fancy sports cars and stuff. Um, I, uh, I like a Charger. It's kind of in the middle. The new Charger or the old Charger? Uh, well, the the one from recent years, the last okay. few years. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Mm. Ah, so this one is from, I don't know how to say this guy's last name, Dan Gachaz? I don't know how to say that one. I'm sorry if I got it wrong, but uh, for Stefan is, uh, what is the average time to compose a song for My Little Pony or Lilith's Pet Shop? Um, well, I mean, I'm not the one who's actually writing the songs. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it's, that's kind of a topsy-turvy kind of thing because writing a song, I see, is, is very unlike just writing underscore for the show which I think is more straightforward and a lot more linear. Um, there's very few holdups on, like, you get to a scene and, like, I don't know what to do here and spend, like, five hours on it. Whereas a song, I mean, a, a song can come off in, like, a half hour, an hour, or you can spend a day writing a song. Mm-hmm. And I just know this from from talking to Daniel and what he's experienced. Um, there is no kind of definitive mean average on how long it takes to write a song because they're kind of a very special animal. Yeah. They're alive. <laughs> in terms uh. of um, in terms of uh, my side of the deal, um, in terms of producing and orchestrating and doing up the song after it's been written, um, that I actually have a lot more concrete number. Um, I mean, that can take me about a day or two for, you know, a two, three minute song if it's reasonably complex. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, my process is, it's, it's rather unconventional. Um, I wish it was more linear cause then I might be able to do it faster, but it's very kind of a labor of love. You know, I'll sit down with the song in its very basic form with lyrics and the, the harmony and just the melody line. And then, you know, start to sketch in, in the sequencer, the various instruments. And I mean, man, I can be working on just a small chunk, a few bars for hours. And then sometimes you get it, you nail it. And you're like, this is what we need. This is the style. This is the sound. And then you can, you can motor through the rest of the song. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ah, 
So this one is from uh, Heart Healer uh, for Stefan. What elements would you want to bring into a full villain song? A uh, full villain song? Um, I mean, we've sort of had a villain song, I guess. We've had yeah. the, the Aria, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is really cool because it went with very big kind of traditional orchestra. Um, but you mean for like specific villains to have yeah. a specific treatment yeah. for them? Uh, yeah. Um, how, about, how, about this? Well, um, how about this? How about this? What would you do for Sombra? Because Sombra was like a toss oh, yeah. away. You know, it, it's like you didn't have a real like theme. You didn't have a song. What would you do for like King Sombrero? But have we seen much of him? I mean, no, we, we saw <laughs> we saw him like for, you know, a little bit like, you know, Crystal Pody. You know, he says that kind of thing. But he had this. Well, I like imagine dark, for him this, this dark um, overview in the background music, but it wasn't like a song, you know. Yeah, I would kind of see him as like a scar figure from Lion King, you know, oh. kind of his oh, yeah. be prepared sort of be thing. Prepared. That's what I would hear for that. Yes. That's well said. <laughs> yes. Ah. Ooh. Um one sec. Where did I put you? Oh here we go. I'm, I'm right here. <laughs> okay, I'll <laughs> Yeah, no idea. No, no, yeah, that's not um, what I meant. No, um, uh, so this one is from Love and Tolerate. Uh, gonna pull a random question. Question for all, if you've guys seen it. Do you think Psy Gentleman, which is the same guy who did uh, Gainem Style, will trend like uh, Gainem Style? And if so, should we start doing that at EQLA? <laughs> that new, that new dance he did. Gentlemen. That new dance, I love it. It's hilarious. <laughs> well, it's hilarious because of how stupid it is. I mean, exactly. the, the last one had all these different... I mean, it, it took you a week to learn that dance. This one is like shake your hips left, left and right. That's it. It's like, what, what, did you get, like, tired from doing the other one for a year? I mean, come on. Well, he earned his money. Now he doesn't oh, yeah. have to try. <laughs> he, earned, he earned his money. Now he's mailing <laughs> it in. It's like, okay, 52 million <laughs> people on YouTube see it, and it's like, okay. That was fast turnaround. That was a fast turnaround, but it was like I haven't a, actually seen it. It's it's pretty boring. I, I was disappointed in myself, but there you go. Oh, uh -uh, really? Yeah, I was disappointed. Uh well, I mean, maybe it's not going to trend. Oh, you know, maybe it will, and maybe it won't. I mean, the, the the dance is so easy; I could learn it in a day. I mean, it took me a week to learn Gangnam Style. I mean, I could learn this other one in a day. I mean, make it tough at least a little bit. I mean, come on. <laughs> Fair enough. You'll see, Fair enough. You'll see everyone moving their hips side to side yep. absolutely everywhere, and you're like, what the hell? 45-year-old <laughs> white boy has got to take you a week to learn a dance to make it good. They need to put the two together. Mm -hmm. Which actually kind of reminds me. Uh, Dusty, would you like to tell them which convention we're going to? Equestria LA. Yeah. <laughs> totally going. Oh, totally going. Nice. Got, got booked in everything, so mm -hmm. cannot wait. Yep. It's gonna be awesome. Yep. Hopefully, hopefully, you'll, hopefully, Stefan comes for uh, Everfree, Everfree Northwest again. Yeah, like I say, I haven't been confirmed from anything. Um, but drive I'd down. Love to, I'd yep. love to go. You know, just, just like you know, just crash it. Just crash drive it. Down. Come on crash down. The party. Crash the party. <laughs> you know, sneak, <laughs> sneak in the trunk of Daniel Ingram's car. You know. Just, <laughs> you know just, be there. Come down. It'll be awesome. Do it, Philly. Yes. Next. Uh, so this one's from Flair, uh, Flair, Flair Cobra. Stefan, what's the hardest? What? The, what's the hardest medium to compose? Uh, to compose music for film, TV, or games? The hardest. Another hard question. Another hard question. <laughs> yeah. I think people get the the sense that this is a hard job that I have. They are so wrong. Oh. <laughs> Can I take this you is a cakewalk. <laughs> <laughs> no. I wish this job was easy, seriously. Um uh the hardest medium. Hmm. Man. Uh well, I've done one, you know, a handful of games and I suppose that you can say they're hard because there's a lot more stringent requirements with those. Um, they have very definite delivery requirements, very definite um, needs for like what exists and what frequency range of the audio spectrum, and like they're like telling you what instruments to use and sending it back to you if you know, yeah, like this doesn't work. And they're layered, eh? So most video games have sound um, systems, you know, sound modules that 
can bring in different layers of a music track. Uh, they're not all like that. Some just play a track and loop it. Um, but that that really kind of stretches your musicianship to make something that works as just the bottom layer and then a composite of two layers and just the top two layers, etc. You know, for for whatever's happening in the game, um, that is difficult and it's hard to really, you know create music that you like and really get invested in it when you're constantly under the gun to abide by all these very strict rules mm -hmm. yeah i mean film and tv um i mean i'd love to write for more film it's just so it's so open because you have such a long program length to work with um television is it's shorter but it's lots of it and it's really fast it's you know um i think television is harder than film but you know i probably shouldn't go too much further on that <laughs> so i haven't done a lot of film and he wants to oh yeah well i mean every chance i get i'm writing something that you know sounds like a cue out of the next gladiator <laughs> <laughs> because you know there's going to be 10 sequels oh yeah at least mm. next uh where did i put you where did I put you? There I'm, you right, I'm right here. Uh, no, not you, Dusty. Oh, okay. I mean my I mean the questions. <laughs> uh, so this one is from McNams, and this is a question from outside your job stuff and outside of Pony and all that is what's your favorite song of all time? Hmm. Favorite song, song of that all you just time. keep putting on replay and you're just like, Yes, I love this song. <laughs> you know, this question sounds kind of familiar. I think this question was posed to me by a certain dusty cat <gasps> at Ever Free Northwest. Was it? And if I recall, I never actually gave you an answer. You're right, you never did. I said that I would do some research. Yes, you would. And I would get back to you. Mm -hmm. And here we so are. Now, your homework. It's got to be like, what, I don't know, seven hmm, months seven later? Seven months later. <laughs> well, I think I actually have an answer for you, <gasps> Dusty. Awesome. What would that be? Yeah. You better be ready for this. I am ready. See, I'm so I'm real close to the camera. I'm ready for it. I'm ready right now. 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 Do it. Do it. Do it. No secrets to love. You know the rules, and so do I. That's it. Oh my god, Stephen. <laughs> I can't believe you just wreck rolled us. I can't believe that. <laughs> you cannot believe how long I've been saving that up. That bro hoof. That's, that's a bro hoof right there, buddy. That's a bro hoof. That was awesome. Right About there. About three Bingo. hours, that actually. Awesome. Yeah. Bro hoof for that. Oh. Yeah. Was, that was, was good. Expecting that was good. I was kind of. I was expecting something, but I wasn't expecting that. Uh, I wasn't fast enough. I know. <laughs> <laughs> good one. Oh my goodness. I, I, I gotta give that one to you. I'll give it to you right there. Good, because I took it anyways. Yes, you took it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Next! Uh, so this one is from uh, Bame uh, for Stefan. I'll, I'll put for all. Um, all wait. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, 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 so, so <laughs> Do you have. Uh, if, if you have time for vacation, if you do, what is your favorite vacation spot slash where would you like to go that you've never gone before? Oh, well, I don't get away for vacation that much, to be honest. Um, I usually try to get, get away like on a weekend or something because there's not often long spans of time. Uh, this year is looking kind of crazy. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to get a break, uh, you know, between seasons of, of shows. Because you realize that, <clears throat> like, once they start, they don't stop, and mm -hmm. it's like clockwork. Um, so I uh, I haven't done a lot of world traveling. I want to do some, some pretty serious world traveling, like uh, England, Scotland. Mm -hmm. um, my heritage is kind of from Scotland. I mean, Andrews. You're right? Andrews, yeah, huh? Uh, you know, go go find my clan, my tartan, find that stuff. Um, and I'd love to hit some spots in the U.S. Because um, I've only done a few, like, you know, L.A., uh, Disneyland, mm -hmm. uh, Washington area, because it's close. Um, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. and, and Vegas, obviously. 
Um, but I'd love to check out some of the bigger hotspots, you know, some of the big uh, venues, some of the big uh, zoos and stuff. Cool. And, you know, maybe visit some some peeps that I haven't had a chance to meet yet. Mm -hmm. And, cool. you know, it's it's funny. These, these uh, My Little Pony conventions have done wonders. They've been great. I mean, to be honest, uh, for myself and a lot of the crew on the show, it's kind of... Not only the first time that we've met each other, because you know there's people in LA and people spread out, mm -hmm. but it's the only time where we really get to kind of cut loose and have fun uh, with the rest of the crew and, uh, of course, the the fans. And that's why I say, like, I'm kind of, I'm warming up to the idea of uh, going to some of these uh, pony conventions for the remainder of 2013 and onwards, uh, because. It kind of folds in the experience of traveling to a new destination mm -hmm. with, you know, being around the fans and hearing the fans' stories and stuff and checking out all the, the fun stuff that they're selling mm -hmm. and doing panels and things. Um, that, to me, is kind of like a vacation. Like Vegas, uh, Las Pegasus was kind of, it was kind of cool. I mean, I've only been there twice and I got to see some new stuff there and, and just have fun. Cool. Um, yeah. You've heard of convention people. He's willing to go just about anywhere. So. Yeah. Well, we'll just see about, about that. We'll see about that. All, these, <laughs> all these, all these clowns who do voices on the show get top billing. So what can I do? <laughs> yeah. uh, so this one is from EFN uh, Mel Mel Dukey. Uh, question for you, Stefan is. Uh, what is the most embarrassing thing you've ever experienced in your career as a composer? Oh, man. That's hard one. <laughs> I mean, in those terms, I'm trying to think of what hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, embarrassing? Uh, hmm. Embarrassing. I mean, some of these are questions I'd love to think about because I know there's stuff. <laughs> I absolutely know there's stuff that's gold, and it's just probably not hitting gold. me right at the moment. Um, well, while you're thinking, we'll bring out the solid gold dancers. Okay, I'm too old. You people are too young to know that. So, there you go. Yes, <laughs> what are you people. About to say? I'm too old because you, you young kids don't know what the solid gold dancers are all about. Who are you calling you people? <laughs> uh, I got brain this one event instantly because A Track just posted this. Do it. Uh, question to you, Stefan, is how do you feel about finally getting your name in the credits yeah. with Ingram? Yeah. I feel. Okay. Is it full of feels? <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling it. I got lots of feels. Was it full um, of feels? Yeah, I'm happy. Oh, yeah. Um, was, it, yeah. Was, it better, was it better than getting nominated for awards? Because you were nominated for some awards up in Canada for, for work on other shows. Was it better? Um, I don't know if it's better. Uh, like we always submit stuff for award shows and you know it wins or it doesn't win um, we still get a piece of paper mm -hmm. you know that's pretty cool too isn't it yeah um, but it's not really about the credit I mean you look at the credits and it's a list of people that worked on the show obviously but not everybody gets in mm -hmm. and there's kind of funny long entrenched um, you know conventions in t film and TV that speak to like well which roles do get placement and credits which ones don't and they mm -hmm. you know they don't have room for everybody because <clears throat> right. i know there's there's lots of ancillary crew that work um that don't get in it is kind of funny um you know i admit that it's you know the end of season three and and that's the first time that i've got my name in the credits but you know to be fair um I mean, the role of arranger or orchestrator is not always actually credited, mm -hmm. uh, and especially in television, because it's such a short format. Um, like Traditionally, my role it just seemed to happen to fall in a blind spot where I haven't been getting regular uh, credits on, on the episodes. But um, that might change. That might actually change. Um, but it's been that way for all the shows, because I, I work on songs with Daniel for Lilith's Pet Shop, and there's been a few for Pound Puppies, too. And it's been the same kind of convention. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also the fact that, uh, you know, in, in the television film world and the entertainment industry, like, you kind of end up shaping your um, your credits list and, and you know, nicheifying, right? Like, people get typecast for stuff. Mm -hmm. 
But you want to be known for stuff. And, and a lot of my contemporaries and my colleagues and people, they say, well, you know, don't sweat it too much because you want to be known as a composer anyways. You know, if you have a thousand credits as orchestrator, then people are just going to hire you as an orchestrator. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's one of it's those funny kind of things of perception and, and whatever. But it feels pretty sweet. And I'm happy that I got it um, at that point on the season three finale because I put a lot of work into not just the songs, but the underscore. And, uh, you know, that would have been that would have been really sucky if I hadn't gotten any any mm -hmm. recognition there. You know, I still get paid, but yeah. that's that's not really what it's about. <laughs> uh, next. Uh, so this one is from uh, Screwloose. A uh, question for Andrew. Will we ever see an Amy Keen Rogers-esque ukulele solo in the future? Um, no. <laughs> no! Nope. <laughs> he said no. 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 I mean, we've actually. I think we've done ukulele at some point, haven't we? I think I mean, so. Now I'm asking you this question because I can't remember. I don't know. I haven't. Um, sure. Yeah, I think we've done some uke, but you know, we get one of the the local union musicians to play, or we'll mm -hmm. get one of our guys to play. Um, but probably not. I mean, the songs go through a lot of changes after the writers pen them down. Mm -hmm. um, they change length. They change lyrics. They change a lot of stuff. Um, I just think, practically speaking, I don't think that would happen. Um, but hey, I would never say never, right? <laughs> Wait, shoot, did I just, uh, <gasps> just, I Biebered myself. Yes, you did. Hey, that was way before Bieber, okay? <laughs> I was way before Bieber. <laughs> we were all way before Bieber. And Dusty was yeah. way, 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 way before, before Bieber. Bieber. <laughs> way. So we don't think in terms of like BC and AD. We think of before and after Bieber. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> because that's relevant. I mean, he's a beacon of our time, yes. for There's better or worse. Aw awesome music before <laughs> and crappy music after. There you go. That's yes, what I called it out. Yes, I called that's it out. That's why we don't sell out. We're still going to write good stuff, and we're not yeah. going to get all fancy and famous and mm -hmm. rich. So don't worry about go. that. <laughs> So this one is from Volpez. Uh, question for you, you, Andrew. Have you bought any My Little Pony merch? <gasps> you know, Screwy, so I know, far I know you've he called has. me... I know he So has. far you've called me Stefan, Stefan, and Andrew. So I'm kind of waiting <laughs> for Standrew and... Standrew and, you know... Affin. You should have been here last week. Oh, no. You should no, have been here last you're week. You're not bringing that up. <laughs> I won't, but you should have been here last week. Because he called, he called GM Barrow just about everything but her name. <laughs> like, over over a GM Barrow? Yes, over a GM Barrow. Good one. Uh, to uh, the uh, question yes. at hand, uh, have I bought? Yes, I've bought yes. some merch. Yes. Not a lot, but I've got a few. I know for a fact you own a vinyl scratch. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. I have a, I got a vinyl scratch plushie from uh, Las Pegasus. Yep. Um, from Everfree, I got a uh, gummy plush, and I got uh, a bottle of, I can't see it from here, but it's a bottle of, like, beer, mm -hmm. fake beer from Pixel Kitties. Yes. Trixie's Arrogant and, Ale, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I got a couple of uh, little figurines. Uh, I didn't buy them. They were given to me, but from uh, OMG WTF BBQ. I can't remember her Twitter handle, but mm -hmm. she's, it was something... <laughs> <laughs> I remember that much, but she's very talented and very sweet. Yes, yes and, she is. Uh, they're amazing. I got one of the San Diego Comic Con derbies. Ah, that was last year, and yes. I got someone to snag one from there. Yes, I have one too. It's awesome. And I have a Rainbow Dash G three point five boxed. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I I probably shouldn't have it because. People don't like the older stuff, but it's <laughs> it's history, right? It is history, yes. Yeah. And I've got some Pet Shop um, merch and all the other shows that I work on. I got stuff. Nice. You got like a big Voltron? Big, big... I, I yes, I do. I have nice. the original 1981 oh. um, diecast. Oh. They, they're hard to find. The lions? Oh. Yep. Yep. Oh, I hate you. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> awesome. Of course, you, you got to take a picture. Of, you got a Twitter picture of that. I did, and you missed you, it. I missed it. I'll have to dig it up. Dig it up. That, that thing's <laughs> awesome. Next. Uh, so this one is from Will the Pony. 
I think that's right. Uh, for Stefan, uh, what do you do to get rid of songwriter's block? Uh, hmm. What write, do I do to get rid of it? Write limericks. Yeah. No. Um, do you, <laughs> assuming that I don't write the songs, of course, do you mean what I do to alleviate Daniel's songwriter block or alleviate my creativity from the production? Your creativity. Uh, okay, good. Because <laughs> I don't know the other one. Mm -hmm. Um, I listen to stuff. Like, I'll go and listen to music that I think is similar. Mm -hmm. um, not just for inspiration, but really as a guide, as a reference to a starting point sometimes. But not always. Sometimes I just dive into something, and it's it's totally self-evident, and it just works out. Um, I go for walks. I think last week I tweeted that whenever I run into, like, creative block, I go for walks. And at that point, I was about three miles from Bangladesh. Or <laughs> I remember that one. <laughs> That's how bad it is. Um, but uh, just change the scenery. Like, like remove yourself from where you are. Do something else. Mm -hmm. Your brain has this funny way, uh, well, most people's, maybe it's just me, um, of resetting itself if you come back. Yeah. Yep. Screwy, we're up against it, man. We're up against the end so, of the show. So can give, I go for one more? Give me that good one. Give me that one good one I know you've been saving. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So this one's from Flare Runner for you, Courtney. I mean, uh, uh, Stefan. Uh, you uh, did. I did. I'm gonna shut up now. I'm, uh, so this one, uh, no, no, I'm not letting you say anything, Dusty. Not... I'm going on. Go on. Uh, <laughs> this is a question that I like, and it is, uh, Andrews, tell us a secret. <gasps> A secret? A secret. No secret. A secret. Anything. Oh, this... Um. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Not easy questions. <laughs> uh, the trouble with secrets is that they are dangerous once they are out. Dangerous. <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> dangerous. Secrets. <laughs> secrets. Secrets. Um. Well, I mean, I'm, I am secretly plotting Daniel's demise on the sly. That's, well, that's not much of a secret, though. That's not much of a secret, though. No. <laughs> We've been on that for a year. A secret. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know. I need to be more specific. Well, you think about it. You think about it. When you come back to the show, you have a secret for us. Oh, you're not doing that to me again. Yes, I am. Right now. Done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, yes. my my secret is going to involve something to do with Rick Ashley. You know, I'm that. sure it will. I'm sure it will. <laughs> like, like your Rick Ashley's secret love child from the '80s. Uh, close, but no. Damn. <laughs> damn. 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 But this this right now is the list of original programming that you out there in TV land can watch or listen to on Everfree Network this week. And after tonight's show, we go into Tuesday. Tuesday is the Cutie Art Crusaders. The CAC will find and discuss the best fan art that this fandom has to offer, and that is Tuesdays, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Then, also on Tuesdays, Brony Clubhouse. The Brony Clubhouse will get together and discuss all kinds of wonderful stuff, and that is 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Then, Equestria Inquirer, every other Wednesday. We're on an on week, so there's a show this week on Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Joe and the guys bring you all the news straight from Ponyville. Uh, Into the Spotlight with Osaka Jack, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern, where Osaka will bring some spotlight to those bronies that are doing wonderful stuff but don't quite get the spotlight they deserve. Sketchy Sounds Live, Songcast, Sketchy Plays Live for you on Thursdays, 2 p.m. Pacific. 5 p.m. Eastern. Then, post my video with Jay Haller and Bvids. That's Thursdays, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, where they bring in all kinds of great PMBs and other videos that have been posted during the week for your fandom. Uh, Brony Breakdown with Saber Spark and Paleo, Thursdays, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. 
Uh, Lunar Republic Takeover on the radio side is the all-request radio program brought to you by Nightmare Moon herself. And that is on Fridays, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Then we go into Mixology with DJ One Trick. That is Saturday evenings, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Saturday Night Songs with Michelle Kreber. When she feels like coming by, eats all her peas, and her mom says it's okay. And that is Saturdays, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Blue Screen Bronies. Blue Screen Bronies discuss all, everything that's going on in the gaming industry. Um, and that is 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern on Sundays. Pegasus is live which is the last show of the week. That is on Sunday, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern, where the Pegasisters do just about what we do here, but from the Pegasister point of view. And that is all the original content you can check out right here every week on Everfree Network. And with that, we are up against it. Nice. Well, thank you guys for having me on the show. Absolutely. I want to thank you. I want to thank Everfree Network for giving me this time. I want to thank Draft for not firing me. I'd like Screwball (laughs) for taking care of all you crazies out there um, in the chat room. Cowboy Dave for making us look so good on YouTubes. Care to win for helping me with just about everything on the show. My wonderful girlfriend, Amy, for helping me do all kinds of stuff yesterday so we could do this program today. Um, everybody that works at uh, My Little Pony at DHX, from the janitor all the way up to Big Jim Miller himself, who got a new job this week. Mm-hmm. He's, he's now a director on the shows. Everybody who, who is following Big Jim on the Twitters, go give him a congrats. And Stefan Andrews himself for tearing him away from the computers to come and be with us tonight. Yes, and again, thanks, guys. And I hope that, uh, you know, I answered the questions <laughs> all right. Oh, yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. You know, I, want, I wanted to give people, you know, uh, uh, reasonable answers and not just make it a, a goof-off fest. <laughs> no, no, reasonable answers are cool. Hey, yo, we had a good time. Everybody, I'm sure everybody had a good time. We had a good time. You have a good time? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Awesome. That I do not need to get back to you about, Dusty. Ah, sweet. So we'll have you, we have, we'll have you back, like, during Season 4, you know. We'll have some epic music come out in season four and have you come and and talk to us about it. Uh, perhaps, perhaps. Or you can, or you can, you know, strong arm Daniel Ingram to getting on the show. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I've been chasing him for over two years. Come on, Daniel. Come on. Stefan's on. He's having a good time. Tell him, tell him what kind of good time you had on the show. Oh yeah. Well, maybe he'll come by. Of course. I don't know if he'll believe that. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> but anyway, next week next week is Moi's birthday. My birthday is next week. And it happens to fall right on show day, so next week's my birthday. We don't know who we're going to have for a guest quite yet, but trust me, it'll be awesome. So It'll be dusty, it'll and be, it'll just be your just, show. It'll just be me. I don't know. I'll get somebody. So thanks for coming, everybody, and we'll see you next week. Ciao. Du, 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 du. Good, Good night, night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. We hate to leave you, but we'll be back soon. Good night, sweetheart. Good night. Good night, sweetheart. Good night.